mercy And what can I say About your grace All that I know Is you've been faithful One thing that I know Is I love to call your name What can I say About your mercy And what can I say Lord About your grace All that I know Is that you've been so faithful One thing's for sure Is I love to call your name Good afternoon and good evening and hello all around the world. I'm Victoria Charles with Practice What You Preach and I'm here today with Evangelist Benjamin Rhodes and he is going to really set this thing off today. I'm going to let him take over the show. What about that? What do you think Hallelujah. about it, Benjamin? Hallelujah. Say hello to everyone. Hi, as she said, I'm Evangelist Benjamin Rhodes with Highways and Hedges Ministry. And I just came to be a servant of the Most High God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And today, as we always start off with Practice What You Preach, we tell everyone, if it's not biblical, it's not... It's not livable. Amen. And we have to live what we practice, right? That's right. And in practicing what the Bible says. That's correct. So today, I want you to get optimistic about the message that he is about to deliver to you. God has something good in store for all of us. We're going to receive it. And with my theme song, before we kick it off, we're going to say a quick prayer. And you are going to say it today. I'm going to put you in the hot spot. Here we go. <laughs> Heavenly Father, yes. O oh God of heaven and earth, Father, we thank you this day, God, for yes. allowing us to breathe and to have our being. Yes. O oh God, for being merciful to us, causing us to still be alive in the yes. land of the living. We pray, O oh Father, that you will use Hallelujah. this opportunity, God, that you have sanctified for your purpose and yes. for your will, God, that your perfect will be done, God, yes. that those that are tuning in live and are listening and watching, yes. and God, God, that you will speak to them where they are, answer the questions of their heart, give them guidance and directions, yes. and let none of your words fall to the ground. Yes. God, have complete dominion and Hallelujah. have your free will. Let nothing hinder, yes. O oh God, your will from being done. Let your yes. spirit have free course, yes. O oh God, that all that you will to be accomplished be so. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus yes. Christ, Amen. we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 Awesome prayer and awesome man of God. So today we're going to kick it off with, you know what, my theme song all the way from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'd like to say a shout out to all of my people and friends there and also to uh, Big D. I hope to um, see you there on a, such a sad occasion, occasion your mom passing away. We will be keeping you guys in our prayers and hopefully I can make the funeral. So I would like to also say a shout out to all, each and every one at all of the churches around here in Louisiana. Louisiana, all of my friends in Natchitoches and all over in, in the Acadian. Hi, love. What's up, love? We all want to say that because that's how they talk here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to keep it Minnesota nice. Amen? All right, now let's kick it off with Optimistic, and here's my DJ. <laughs> now, we want to break those chains of darkness. All right, check out the song. Keeping you always, Avita Had, and always in the loop, right here, 101.3. I'm Victoria Charles, and none other than Benjamin Rhodes. And we're going to let you know that God is being optimistic about you getting saved today, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, and that would fire. Hallelujah. God is optimistic about you coming to his kingdom. That's why he gave Jesus, and he wants you to look up to him, not just to the sky, look through the sky sky and see none other than the great I am. Amen. He's waiting for you. Check it out.
right, Kenny. All right now. Let's put it on down. Put it on. Hallelujah. 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 It's all good. Amen. In the neighborhood when Jesus is on board. Amen. Yes. It's not good without him. It's all good when Jesus is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, like I mentioned to you before, I have a powerhouse here. And I can't sit in this powerhouse and not share it. I just can't eat all of the cake up and not give you guys some and some ice cream. We need some Holy Ghost party people up in here that they will say, we want to have a party. This ain't no kind of worldly party. I don't even like using the word party because I believe it came from Satan. So I say we want to have a Holy Ghost time Holy today. Ghost, good Amen. Time. A good time. We want to do some rolling on the flow, some casting out devils. Yes. We want to see some people falling out under the true anointing mm -hmm. right in their own house. We want some people just fall out on the flow yes. and give their life to God and all them demons be cast out as God put the Holy Ghost on the inside. They get to speaking in unknown tongues yeah. as the Spirit give them others. And they walk up and they wake up and they so drunk they somebody got to drive them home and they forget they even at home. They've got the Holy Ghost. It's just so much in them. So I wanted just that kind of Holy Ghost. Yes. Bring back the old days when old we tarried. Yes. We tarried around that altar. Yes. We labored in prayer yes. with you. We said, oh no, that ain't it. You got a cloven tongue. You got to come back and something ain't right there. You're still sinning. You're still lying. You're still whole mugging. You got to come back tomorrow and come start it back. all over again. Yes. We're going to get on this altar and we're going to tear it until the Holy Ghost come. Amen. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Realness in God. Mm -hmm. And when you get that Holy Ghost, you're going to back up off like a crawfish when they bring you that alcohol. You're going to back up like a crawfish when they woman come twisting in front of you with that little mini skirt on and you know you're married. You're going to back up like a crawfish when that fornicating devil boy come by and he's so good looking and you just, mmm. But all of a sudden, you he don't see nothing mm -hmm. but Jesus and say, get away from me, Satan. Because if you don't want him, you you don't want me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to back up like a crawfish when those demons that used to reside in you want to come and take over this vessel. You ain't getting no seven more and coming up in this house. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. We block you. The Holy Ghost is here. And you can't come in. Amen? Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So right now, with no further ado, the man of God on fire. I just thought I'd throw in a little tidbit because when he get through with you, you're going to wish you had some more. Oh. Hallelujah. Take over this show. Hallelujah. 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 I, I definitely want to give honor to my Father in heaven, God Almighty, the one and only true living God, and to his son, my Savior, Jesus Christ, that truly saved me and made me a part of the organization that I'm a part of. And I must give honor where honor is due in recognizing my chief apostle, Wendell Archie, that has fathered this ministry over 40 something years ago and have stood on God's word and upon God's truth, which is why we have uh, what we have today in this ministry, Highways and Hedges Organization, a ministry that stands on truth, a ministry that holds the testimonies that Jesus Christ said that we would have when we receive the power of the Holy Ghost. The thing I want to talk with you about today is this, is that Jesus Christ truly did come, and Jesus Christ truly did die upon the cross. We hear many ministers today speak about the blood of Jesus Christ, and I thank God for his blood. But I understand what that blood was for. Today in our generation, in our society, we think that the blood of Jesus Christ was just so that our sins could be forgiven, that we can continue on living as we live in, knowing that every sin that we do, every sin that we commit is forgiven, and that one day we're going to die and we're going to make it all into heaven as we are. Well, I come to bring you the gospel. I come to bring you truth because Jesus Christ said these words. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, I thank God for, his, for the blood of Jesus Christ because truly without it, I could not be saved. I would still be a rich undone. I was somebody before coming to God and surrendering my life to Jesus Christ. I was living in the streets. I grew up in the streets of Alexandria, Louisiana. I grew up as a father that sold crack cocaine for a living. A mother that was a hardworking mother to the point she worked two jobs to provide for her family, for her children. But I followed the pattern of my dad, the man that raised me, 
that had me in the kitchen at a young age while I was still in elementary school teaching me how to cut up crack cocaine. When I got older, as a teenager, I engaged in the same lifestyle of selling drugs and found myself sitting in jail at the age of 18 years old, being sentenced to seven years in prison for armed robbery charges. While I was in jail, my life began to change and I actually grew more worse, more criminally minded because I was surrounded by a bunch of criminals that knew how to do things in the streets to get money, which seemed to be enticing to me, very intriguing. When I came home from jail, because I was no better, I was actually worse off, I came home September 21st, 2007. And by December of that same year, I found myself being shot with a 45 Smith & Wesleyan at point blank range. My life, you would thought would have, I, I would have began to grab a hold of myself and see that this road was leading me nowhere good fast. But for me and my mindset, it seemed as if it only gave me more street credibility. So I continued on in that lifestyle. I saw myself being a drug dealer, being a rapper, and all of these things, being incarcerated, being shot, having street credibility, only gave me more fame in the life that I was living. I had no desire to serve God, and I did not believe in Jesus Christ. I continued on in this way of living, to the point I found myself going back to jail the following year. June 15, 2008, I found myself on the run for second-degree murder and convicted felon with a firearm. This was less than a year of my release. God moved for me in my life even when I did not deserve it. I was not worthy of it. I sat behind bars here in Lafayette, Louisiana, in the Paris jail, facing 20 to life and a mandatory 15-year sentence for a convicted felon with a firearm. While sitting in this cell, there was nobody for me or my family to pay off that I would get a, a lenient sentence. There was nobody for me to turn state on, or as the streets would say, to rat or to snitch on. These were some charges that I was facing alone by myself, where they had not only the gun, they had the body. They had the witness. They had me. Once I turned myself in, I confessed that I squeezed the trigger and I committed this charge. I told God while I was sitting in bars behind these, this cell, I told God, get away from me. I don't want nothing to do with God. I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. I was actually angry and mad at God for allowing my life to end up in the predicament that it was. I blamed God for the decisions that I made. But I told God, because I knew I had a praying mother that believed God, that was full of the Holy Ghost and truly serving Jesus Christ in truth, I knew that this woman of God was praying for me and that it was a possibility that God could be merciful to me. But I told God, even if you do move for me and get me out of this situation, I have no intentions of going home and live for you. My mindset was that if you would release me today or tomorrow, I would go back to the streets doing the same thing. God seemed fit to have mercy on me when I did not deserve it. I sat in that cell suicidal, contemplating taking my own life, but God stopped me because he knew the purpose and the plan that he had for me. When I counted myself out, when others counted me out, God chose to have mercy. They signed me out of Lafayette Parish Correctional, scot-free, no paper, no parole. They dropped the murder charge, uh -huh. said no true bill. They threw out the convicted felon with a firearm and dropped it to illegal carrying of a weapon, which was a misdemeanor. The grand jury deliberated and set me free and it caused me to walk out of jail free Hallelujah. of any charges. But I know of a certainty. It was nothing that was done by any judicial system, by any law, or by any amount of money or testimony. It was only because God himself chose to have mercy on my life. Was that to say he wanted me to go on living the way that I was living, doing the things that I was doing? Not at all, but I did. I came home from that jail, and I went back to the streets. I went back to living the life that I was living even worse than what I was. But it was at that dark time in my life when I called myself running, living contrary to what I knew God wanted me to live, Jesus Christ himself began to talk to me and deal with me in my conscience. I did not know at the time what that really was. But after reading this Bible, I began to understand that it was the grace of God that appeared unto me. 
Not the grace of God that appeared to say, you okay as you are. You can continue to smoke your weed, drink your liquor, and have your 30 girlfriends, and it's covered under the blood. No, that was not the grace that spoke to me in my mind. But the grace of God that the Bible talks about in the book of Titus chapter 2, he says this, that the grace of God has appeared unto all men, but it comes and it brings something. It brings salvation. The grace of God appeared to me in the darkest time of my life and began to tell me exactly what the Bible says in the book of Titus. It said it appears to all men and it brings salvation and it comes teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Not when we die and when we get to heaven, all of a sudden we have, we have an option to change our course of living or that we're going to have a new mind, a new spirit. But now in this present world, while we're dwelling upon this earth alive, it is given to us an opportunity to choose to live the way God tells us to. When that grace was presented to me, I began to tell God, but I'm bound. God, I'm addicted to this life that I'm, a, I'm living I'm addicted to these drugs. I called it breakfast. I'm addicted to fornication. It wakes me up out my bed and drives me at night. I'm addicted to this mindset that I have to kill and to commit murder. But if, if it is truly you, Jesus Christ, that is calling me, I know that there's hope. I know that I can make it. If it's truly you, you're going to have to help me. I tell you, I stood outside with the dope in my hand. Crying, tears falling from my face, snot dripping from my nose, saying, God, if this really you, you can't let me go. God, if you let me go, I know that I'm not going to make it. But if you hold on to me, I know that I can be free from this life that I'm living. See, I knew the difference. I knew what it was like to be set free. When I came home September 21st, 2007, those that, you, that may have been convicted felons, that may have served time in jail, you know that they release you at 12.01 a.m. upon your discharge date. At 12.01, September 21st, 2007. They opened the prison doors that I had sat in for over six years, four months, ten days flat. Being shipped around North Louisiana, Catahoula, Ravia, Richwood, Claiborne. They let me loose. And I tell you, when I Walked out of those jail doors. I took out running like a dog that was let loose off a chain that he had been caged up in for years. I ran around the parking lot screaming and hollering, I'm finally free, I'm finally free. But my mind was still the same. I was not free from the thing that landed me in jail. I was not free from the sin, the mindset. But oh, when I came to Jesus, hallelujah, that blood got a hold of me. That blood washed me. It did not just set me free. The Bible says when you hear the truth, the truth shall make you free. That truth made me free in my conscience. It caused fornication to be moved away from my mind. It's like this. He said that the blood of Jesus Christ who through the eternal spirit is able to purge our conscience from dead works that we are able to serve the living God. He purged my mind that I no longer desire the life that I used to live. I don't desire the woman I'm not married to. I do not desire the liquor. I do not desire the weed. I have not had a curse word to slip out of my mouth since I've been saved. He has made me free. My message to you today is Christ will make you free, Hallelujah. not just set you free. I encourage you to go on YouTube, listen to an anointed man of God, Chief Apostle Wendell Archie. You type in the words, Christ will make you free under the RTM group. Listen to this man of God that have been sent by Jesus Christ to preach this truth that will make you free, that will give you a new life, a new mind, and a new spirit. Hallelujah. I turn you back over to the hands of Victoria. God bless you. Hey, I just want to praise God with you. Hallelujah. What an on fire testimony. I don't care if we have one minute. I want to give God the glory for this man. Hallelujah. You know what God can do. Look, transformation right here. Amen. Liberty right here. Set him free. Made him free. Oh, glory. I can't wait. You coming back. 
All right, Hallelujah. every week you can come back. Every week he can come back and take over the show. I don't care. Practice what you preach. That's it. I'm Practice telling him, just preach. go on. This is the co-host forever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need this Holy Ghost up Lord in here. So, Father, we gonna just we got two minutes, Mark. We just want to thank you. We want to thank you, Evangelist, for that word. You got to come back. You got to oh, preach God. a whole hour. I will get out of the way. Just worship and praise God. Will you do that for us? Seriously. Whatever will you come the Lord's back? Will is. Whatever he will you to do. Yes, I, and man. then we're going to get you down in Nagadish. Nagadish, get ready because we're going to bring him down there so he can do some revivals with all of yeah. the pastors i know one uh, pastor al holden my father and all the rest of them would love to have a man of god like you come there and, and just honor. blast the devil out amen so now we're gonna say goodbye and you're gonna put a song on as we're getting yes. ready to leave he's got a good song from camp meeting i can't wait hallelujah. all right hallelujah hallelujah and this is a song from our chief apostle wendell archie uh he, that has gone through many things in life but he've learned uh, through everything that he's experienced, to just put it all in God's hands. Yes. Hallelujah. And everything will be all right when you truly trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Put it in his hands. I have a problem. I can't solve. testimonies am i right yes, and that's how we can encourage you to know who god is he's still in the healing business the saving business delivering business the marriage business the restoration business the children's business anything you need god is in it that's right hallelujah, hallelujah. he got you amen hallelujah bye-bye everyone god bless you god bless you And I tell you what's up yes. Ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed Yes, I'm blessed. living every moment, no regrets no. Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh Yes, I'm blessed, yes, I'm blessed Yes, ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed Yes, living every moment, no regrets Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh Yes, I'm blessed, yes, I'm blessed Yes, I'm blessed I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed.